This is Bonneville. Where Hello. are we? Hello. We're on um, Chabella. I had to think where we were on then. Got me leisure suit, Tom. <laughs> For those that are new around here, this is our, I'd like to say monthly Q&A, but we've lost track of where we are with we them all. We don't know what we're doing when. But we do a Q&A, we used to call it a podcast, I don't know why, but we do a monthly Q&A where we answer your lovely questions which are sent in here to this email address, darrenevans05 at gmail.com. Mrs Bonneville never likes to know what the questions are. Nope. Um, we do do a little bit I'm just literally getting the questions up now um, and as I say all I do is just cut and paste them from the email um, we don't do polit politics or religion we definitely don't do holiday lodges or park homes whatever they're called um, or GSA motorbikes or motorbikes the list is growing um, and sometimes I do have to edit some of the um, comments and questions in terms of the language I think that's about it, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. Now, before we start, I just want to shout out, if I may, um, a comment that came in this morning. Because I very rarely read the comments. It's Mrs B that deals them all. Um, but I just thought, wow, this is just a lovely, lovely comment. Right, hold on a minute. Anyway, anyway, here we go. And this has come from a chap called um, James. I think Mrs B has responded to you in terms of thank you ever so much. But I just want to read this out. Um, I love your videos, guys. I have been a subscriber since you started your mortar to water journey. I really look forward to seeing you. Sorry, seeing your new vids pop up. I've recently gone back and started watching them all over again from the beginning. Oh, shame on you. No. Um, if ever I need a bit of a pick up on a dark and rainy day, um, I'll stick you guys on and have a chuckle. Aww. My favourites are still the monthly podcast um, stroke Q&A, the longer Q&A episodes, um, but the shorter ones are great too. I love your philosophy on life and have the same approach to mine. Having been in the corporate world for 15 years, my heart was telling me to quit and follow my dreams, uh, in brackets, to drive commercially trucks and coaches, close brackets. Just like Mr B, I don't... Um, I don't believe in having a plan B, dead right fella. Um, all in or not in. Um, so, took the plunge six months ago and haven't looked back. Plus, I passed my coach test yesterday. Well top bloke, done. top bloke. So, we'll be looking forward to going, uh, sorry, to doing some European work. A great way to get a holiday. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> anyway, to wrap up, I think you guys are fab and would love to meet you uh, someday. Hope all is well with the three of you and who knows I may even send a question sometimes best wishes James James I just felt compelled to read that out that's lovely you've summed up mm. pretty much our attitude you get one life go and live it so thank you that was just a really nice comment yeah that's very it? nice yeah can well, I just make a, just a very quick point before we of course on. you can um, if we're a little bit erratic with the vlogs because uh, we, we didn't put one out we don't last care week. We, we do we didn't put one out last week Some, we've had such bad weather that it's more or less kept us local uh, so we really didn't have a great deal to film uh, my mum also she's been and had a big op so uh, I've been over to Sheffield um, let's get well soon Pat and she's doing very very well which is great so so we, we haven't really had that much to film so no. if you don't see us for a week or two it's not that we've gone off or done no. you know moving on we're, we're okay good point Mrs Hello. B Razor. oh and this is Kenneth for those that don't know come on fella come and sit down yeah. come on now well, it's Come not on, the we're Kenneth doing a Q&A, it's not all about you. Come on, <laughs> come on, come and sit down. <laughs> come and sit down now. Good boy. Good lad. Oh, look at that. Well done, go. well trained. Right, so let's crack on. Lynn Jarvis from Rotherham. Um, not really a question. Uh, more of a confirmation of you're right, Mr B. <gasps> more um. of a confirmation you are right, Mr B. Thank oh. you, Lynn. Don't care what it is, Lynn. but thank you. So, here goes love your videos on retirement mr b this isn't a retirement question <laughs> so much so i decided to carry on working because you are absolutely right if you really can't afford to do the things you want to do then keep working for as long as you can and do them at the weekend or when holiday or reduce your hours i already know this is the best decision i have ever made this is all down to you mr b massive thank you lynn thank you you're welcome um as i say i don't talk about my retirement plans however however 
update I'm now doing just four days a week pre 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 retirement I'm not doing compressed hours or anything like that I've just decided to just do four days a week so I now have every Friday off <laughs> and I'm loving it I couldn't do more than one day a week at the moment and I certainly couldn't you know my views on retiring on a boat but you know what Lynn nice one I absolutely delighted. maybe you should be a lifestyle guru maybe I should be a life coach there you Get go a load of comments for that Lynn thank you for that um, thanks Lynn yeah thank you for that um, Mark Rowlands uh, from Surrey absolutely love the stuff you per get up to so funny and really easy to watch on the eye especially you Mrs B thank that's you that's your first strike thank you Mark. very much um, did you guys ever test uh, sorry quick question did you guys ever test the Range Rover Evoque if so would be really keen to get your views question mark have given up trying to find a one owner full dealership history, service history discovery <laughs> like yours and um, we waited you, you they are out there mark you just you've just got to wait yeah um you must have waited and looked for a while yeah we did we missed i missed out on two didn't oh, i oh yeah which i was gutted about i just couldn't get to the dealership no. quick enough and they'd gone but happy with what we, we've got we pass don't we when we do our bakewell walks or or when we, we go to sheffield or whatever we pass a really good uh, dealership don't we in a place called matlock i can't remember what his name is but he, he has one or two nice ones in there yeah he? yeah but i think mark's looking for a main dealer one. Oh, but right. yeah, yeah yeah um keep the vids uh, coming guys ps absolutely love your views on social media mr b have they changed no uh, you know <laughs> for those that don't know my views on social media watch a q a a good few months ago where i had a little bit of a rant about people spending their lives on it um so mark like asked it. did we test drive the range rover vote no we didn't um we do really much uh, very much sorry really much we do very much like the evoke um, mm. but it was just for us and kenneth too small um, yeah. the boot was just too small yeah uh, but beautiful vehicles but no we didn't uh, we didn't test drive it unfortunately and that's the main reason we got the disco yeah it's just it it's a nice big car i'm a quite a chunky chap as you can see um i, I also like a, a powerful engine the disco has got the three litre twin turbo um and i'm not saying the evokes or the other land rover models are underpowered but i just like the disco for its size and the, and its engine um but we really do like the look if we hadn't got this little fella down here i think we'd have ended up in yeah an with an evoke because yeah. i personally mm. i know everyone's got the view but we really like them yeah we went to a main dealer to look at them all didn't we mm. and we sat in the evoke and we were like really like it yeah i say once we got to the boot <laughs> we sat in we sat in one we sat in a really really posh one. Two hundred and three thousand <gasps> pound range rover i didn't want to put my boots inside it, it was beautiful oh, but, it was lovely. Yeah. but yeah good luck mark keep keep looking mate you will find yeah, a, a yeah, one owner there. full you know dealership we did you will find them they are out there mate but you've got to jump on them quick like yeah. we did yeah like lightning so Stuart robbins from cardiff has put um really great channel and content thank you ever so much for these videos thank i know you. they must take a lot of work and a lot of effort oh thank you i just i'm a gob on a stick uh, Mrs It'll B videos editing. it and edits it. <laughs> um, have we really not lost any money on our boat so far? Mar uh, Stuart's put in brackets. Sorry if that's a really personal question. I ask because the market has literally dropped mm. off so much. So much so that I'm not going to buy a boat at the moment. It's so scary how much boats, how much boats were 12 months ago and how much they are now. Yeah. Uh, Without obviously going into the numbers, have we lost any money on boats? No. No. Um, we didn't buy our first narrowboat with that in mind, no. but we did buy that narrowboat knowing that there was a very, very good likelihood that we would end up on a wide beam. So we bought that particular narrowboat, not with that in mind, but it was certainly, well, it was certainly at the back of my mind. Um, we, we fell in love with it, didn't we? Because we'd, we'd gone with the with all sorts of different views of what we were looking for and we stood on uh, love life triumph and just loved her didn't we and she was all the things that we didn't want really but we just loved her we uh, did i didn't think about anything to do with making money or profit on a bit mr b's always thinking about money not always thinking about money but i'm always thinking of the commercial side of things it's, it. it's just maybe the way my mind's programmed um because i've run my own business all my life so um i 
so no we we haven't lost money and and you know there'll be some folk now if they are watching this and when they hear what they are about to hear they'll probably sit and think oh look at him i'm not saying anything other than how we are right now if we sold this boat right now in terms of the current market conditions we'd still make money um and did we buy it for that reason no but again was it at the back of my mind absolutely you know chow bella needed a little bit of love mm. and she's had that love you know we're going to put some new windows window frames in it next year that's because we want to um and then that's it um it's done um but as i say you're absolutely right stuart the our send has fallen out of the market where i feel really sorry for folk is and probably you've heard me bang on about it in previous q and a's if you bought a boat over the last 12 to 36 months in terms of steel prices global recession downturn in the economy and you're selling it now and you paid full price for it check my face out you really needed to think that one through unless you're going to bid on a boat in that time window with what i've just said in terms of those global dynamics you are going to lose money you don't need to be an economist to work that out you're going to lose money and that's where i feel sorry for folk if they've got newish boats now and they're trying to sell them because the backside's fallen out of the market um not that you've asked but, but you've said don't buy i think you're right i will the market come back yeah will markets come mm. back but right now i wouldn't even think about selling this boat because yeah. we'd be heartbroken in terms of what a brokerage would probably value it at but i want to stress not that we're waving our willies even if we put it on a brokerage right now we'd still make money and i don't um, have one and i'm and i'm happy about that to be honest with you because that's mm. the golden rule you should be making money not losing it um and yeah it is frightening there's boats on new and used here brand new boats that started off at two hundred thousand pound that are fifty sixty thousand pound off it that's and that's really without you bidding on them a lot of money to yeah make. it is yeah. it's an awful lot of money and as i mm. say but i'm a firm believer and this is where i'll probably get hate mail you get back commercially what you put in the front end of your deal um and if you don't do the deal right at the front end you're always going to play catch up so anyway banging on too much Stuart I, I absolutely feel for you mm. if you've got the time and you don't need to buy one sit back and wait mate or go bid if we were buying a boat now oh my god the brokerage would hate me <laughs> <laughs> end of now. yeah sorry for the little rant can I just do something just absolutely the there's a lovely picture over there and the sun's just shining in my eyes I need to just move the picture excuse me a minute there we go that's it shine it in my eyes <laughs> <laughs> no Stuart thank you we've got sunshine Andrew and Catherine Barnes from North Wales oh lovely um, the videos are really great and we love watching because we're relatively new to you you popped up on our thumbnail nice absolutely I love popping um, up on thumbnails <laughs> can, we are considering oh this I'm going to have a rant oh Ranty, go ranty, on, go on. Mrs. B doesn't even know the questions. I don't. We are considering getting a more so squirrel stove and have heard in brackets. However, we've not done any research, so it may just be gossip. Close brackets. Do your research, Andrew and Catherine. Um, that they are that they are possibly being banned. Also, would you recommend one for and um, being out on the cut? We are brand new to all this stuff and are and are having so many different pieces of advice. Uh, and are really conflicted band what the morsel squirrel <laughs> do you know what would you have one in a heartbeat why 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 would they be banned i don't understand that uh, do you know what it and i have andrew and kath you've probably already got it <gasps> I, i've responded to your email uh, about 10 days ago um with a little link to the government's legislation on multi-fuel stoves right so not just morsel squirrel just <laughs> no, any, no. any stove right absolute right. nonsense and if anyone i even went into our chandlers midland chandlers and asked um and if anyone tells you anything different just tell them to go ball the face are they being banned no is the government looking to make sure fuel is a little bit more environmentally friendly in terms of what to burn yes and the government have been doing that for a number of years but our stoves multi-fuel stoves and there's more than one brand but you've asked about more so squirrel are they being banned on boats no go and have a look at brand new boats on brokerage um 
they've got stoves on them um i'm only laughing because it really does frustrate me would we recommend one <gasps> yes. in a heartbeat yes 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 please yes, if we, we could do it. anything i know you're new to all this stuff we were three years ago don't let anyone tell you oh it's got an electric fire they might they look pretty but they only send heat one way right at you that will not heat your boat trust us that thing last year for six months was not off and we were sitting here in shorts and t-shirts when it was minus four or five outside we haven't Please. put it on yet because it's not been that no, cold we've got our basto central heating yeah we've got the central heating on and there's another little point i am having a rant don't buy a boat with just one form of or source of heating you know this boat's got a wabasto so diesel central heating we've got the multi-fuel stove so we can put wood or coal into it and we've got a couple of big dyson fans please don't get suckered into buying a boat with just one form of heating get please get a stove and, and just don't listen to the drivel that other folk are talking about unless it unless you want in a, an older boat you know the chug 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 even chug. those got stoves in oh, i know they've got stoves yeah. in but that's just one form of eating you know they haven't got some of them haven't got central eating have they some have yeah you can fit oh have they yeah yeah you can oh, fit right. central okay. eating you can I fit so you know it doesn't have to necessarily be a webasto ebbers bachelor all that so t my point is don't listen to the drivel um, and I was saying, I did send you an email with a link in terms of the governments. I suppose um, they're trying to stop people burning horrible stuff. Yeah, look, we've all smelled there's, that. There's folk on this marina that burn things that they shouldn't be burning, and there's folk and out smells. in suburbia life. You know, when we lived on land, we had a stove, a wood stove, mm. and we bought. Yes, it cost a little bit more. We bought kiln dried wood, and yeah, I know there's some folk that chuck all sorts of. Oh, crap in my there. My brother's been a, um, a bugger for that in the past until we've told him. <laughs> and he still does it. Mm, he still has his moments. Bless him. Um, but no, I mean, we couldn't... Oh, oh, I love it. I can't wait. I think I've got a bit of cave woman in me because I, I love to have a bit of a, a play around and poking it and stuff. Love uh, I love playing with the fire. Yeah. So, Andrew and Catherine, I'm sorry for the little rant there, but it really does frustrate me. As I say, go look on you... Uh, new and used website um, go and have a look in a, a Chandler's a Midland Chandler's you know it, it's ram packed with stoves um, and I couldn't as I say I couldn't recommend them enough rant over I'm just going to move my chair Mr B bought me this lazy boy <laughs> a few weeks ago just one second I sat on it once oh oh you see excuse me <laughs> right. so um, <sighs> Stu, sorry Sue Roberts from Leicestershire Oh, literally right. stumble across the channel recently and me likes it a lot so Excellent. thank you thanks sue uh, <laughs> oh god mr b you don't tolerate fools do you do you mind me asking where does this come from mrs b how do you cope i bet he's a right handful off camera apologies <gasps> if it's been asked before <laughs> mrs b how do you cope with me i just i like go over my head and a lot of things i like go over my head um because he's a handful but at least he's out at work four days a week. <laughs> I've got him the own three now instead of two. I've always said, I, for those folk that do know me, um, I don't wake up to be um, horrible to anyone. It's not in my nature. No, no, he doesn't. Um, no. Well, I but but if you ask me a question, I'm going to give you my opinion. Not the right answer, not the wrong answer, just my opinion. I'm not asking you to uh, agree with it, but respect it because I'd respect yours even if I didn't agree with it. So that that's the deal with me. Don't ask if you don't want to hear my opinion. I'm not saying it's the right or wrong, it's just my opinion. Um, you know, and, and, and that's me. I'm like it at work, um, I'm like it here, um, and no, I don't suppose I do tolerate fools. I don't tolerate fools and I don't tolerate folk who don't like a day's work, and I hate people who haven't got charitable natures. That's it. <sighs> There we go. So yes, a bit of a handful, but he is kind and generous. So thank uh, you. So that makes it thank up you. for it. Uh, Maureen Roberts from Wrexham. Uh, Mrs B. Oh, what about me? Mrs B, what are your plans for Christmas? That sounds like we're splitting up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Maureen. Uh, sorry, Mrs B, what are your plans for Christmas and the New Year? Will it be on the boat or something else? If it's something else, I'm going to get worried, Maureen. <laughs> um, oh. And have you? Um, got the other sofa yet? Uh, got the lazy boy. Got the lazy boy instead, and it's really nice. In fact, I nodded off it a bit last night, didn't I? During uh, the blacklist. Um, 
So as as, a, as far as the soap is concerned, sorry, can I just cut in? Just in case you don't know, the blacklist is a series on um, oh. Amazon videos that we're watching. If you want something right. to watch, watch yeah. it. It's brilliant. Um, and as for Christmas, we're having Christmas. We always have Christmas Day, just the two of us. Well, the three of us, Kenneth. We'll go and have a few drinks with our friends in the boardwalk, and then we'll come back. And I produced produce a wonderful Christmas dinner, don't I? So we'll yeah. have all the trimmings and everything. Uh, Christmas Day. We we tend to see the family in the New Year, Boxing Day, day after, and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I have a little. Sorry, I I have a little rule which we both kind of adhere to naturally. I absolutely don't want to see anyone except my wife on Christmas Day. I, I absolutely love spending the whole day with my wife. I really do, and I do get the weekends and Fridays now. Smile, <laughs> but no, I absolutely. That's my only little demand over the Christmas period. And we're I, fine with that. Yeah. We're fine with that because uh, you know, and the family tend to do that as well. And then yeah. we all get together at different times over the. The, a new year we usually spend new year in sheffield new year's eve in sheffield and doing something with uh sister-in-law brother-in-law julian dave yes and uh and my brother and his wife brian linda i'm a nephew and his wife ash and emily yeah uh oh not car and mike because they've got the children so yeah, we don't uh, like otherwise. Them. <laughs> we do. Well, we would be with them as well. But yeah. yeah, so we tend to do a family thing New Year's yeah. Eve, don't we? Yeah. And have lots of drinks and stuff. So but as I say, we do, that, sofa. we do that together, Maureen. We're not splitting up. I'm not sitting here having a pot noodle on my own on Christmas Day. No, we'll have a full, we'll have a full uh, Christmas dinner, as will Kenneth. Very good. Well, he'll have the meat. Right, so Gail... Sorry, I should have said at the top end of this question answer, we tend to do 12 per per session. So, Gail, hey, come and sit down, you. Lay down. Come on. Kenneth, hey, come on. Come and sit down. He'll be going out in another hour, that's what he That's said, it. Kenneth. Stay there. Good boy. Good boy. So, Gail and Simon Ward from London, will you be doing your own blacking next time or letting, I think we call, you call it Street A, do it again? I'm contemplating doing it myself next time, but just a little unsure. Well, we've actually, um, our friends Neil and Paul who are on Wide Bean Goldfinch, when they had Can Narrowboat Goldfinch, Come on, sit down. we went in, was it the yeah. Narrowboat that we blacked? Yeah. Yeah. Sit so, down. Um, so me and Neil and Paul, actually, we blacked their, their Narrowboat, didn't we? So it's, you know, it, it swings around about. It's... Would we do it ourselves? No, to be perfectly honest with you. Although it wouldn't put me off, it's just time for me. Yeah. Um, and again, it's not something I would let and expect Mrs. B to do on her own. And I know Neil and Paul would help her yeah. willingly, and, and you know. But no, um, next time, not next year, year after when we get it blacked again, it'll be street A. Yeah. Um, however, if you are looking, and I did respond to you, <coughs> excuse me, I did respond to you um, in terms of sending a link. Uh, we're on the move. Um, did a video about blacking That's their right. wide beam boat and mm -hmm. I we thought it was a really really great video yeah um, so have a little look um, on there yeah, yeah right there on the moving on David <coughs> Roberts David David Roberts put in brackets Mrs B Mrs B will like this and your best voice Mr B oh David Roberts put from the north <laughs> From North, <laughs> you nearly got it right. Great, great channel, and thank you ever so much for the content you pair. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's a really nice thing to say, David. Um, in your opinion, what's the main benefit? Sorry, Mrs. B. Sorry. Um, in your opinion, what do you think the main benefit of a seventy-foot boat over a smaller sixty-foot boat is? Is the ten-foot really worth it in terms of the mooring fees that you guys pay at Mercy Marina? Go online if you've not looked. Everyone else. They're horrendous. <laughs> They're well, not cheap. Size does matter. Um, yeah, um, we're uh, yeah we like that extra ten foot, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> ten foot. I don't um, know. Don't yeah, know we do. Um, it, yeah, it does. It does. I, I love it. Absolutely it, love it. It's a huge difference. Yeah, it um, is. Massive, massive. We always said when we were going, when we knew we were going to go buy a wide beam we always well i certainly said to myself i think we were both on the same piece of paper again all in or nothing 
I, I'm not interested. I wanted to get the biggest wide beam we could possibly get. Because we knew we weren't going to take it out. Yeah. Um, it was just going to be our floating apartment, floating bungalow. Yeah. So that extra 10 foot is massively important. Yeah. It was for us as well because we didn't, as we've said many times, um, David, we didn't want the second bedroom. So what we've got here is an enormous living space. Mm -hmm. We've still got a really nice bedroom with a, a super king size bed. It's enormous, the bed. You just Massive bathroom. Other yeah huge back deck so yeah that that 10 foot yes we pay for it on the mooring fees as i've said before our mooring fees every single month here are 817 pound we pay our crt license of 130 odd so it's a thousand pound a month just to be sitting uh in water um but you know i don't we've know got, we've got uh, you know we love it we love it and we've yeah. got so much yeah yeah to, we love it including that all the land all yeah. the grounds and everything so uh, hopefully that's answered your question and as mrs b said you know you size know, does matter size does matter. david and paula parker from kent we've got one two we've got three more after this wow it's flying by um such a lovely channel such a lovely couple thank you um and as everyone else, uh, and as everyone else says thank you so much for putting the time and effort into the videos oh. they really are great thank we you. love the cute the question answers though uh, more than anything um, we are so confused and stressed, Mr. and Mrs. B. Oh dear. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight exclamation wow. marks. Wow. Well, why are there so many boats for sale? Especially wide beams like you pair have. Mm. I'm looking at so many, and I can, sorry, I'm looking at so many, and at the moment I can, we can get a brand new one for 150,000 pound, or a pre-owned one for 160 to 170. What the hell is going on? Come on, Mr. B, a few words of wisdom, please. Would you buy now or sell now? I'd love to know your, I'd love to know both of your opinions. Oh, it's funny, isn't it, because that, that goes on from the question that we had before. Uh, no, we won't sell at the moment, um, no. because we, we just don't think we'd we'd get what, what Charbel is worth, really, do we? No. Uh, not what we put into it. Or you just stick it on the, the problem is, well, not the problem is, the, the challenge is if, you, if we put it on for what we know it's worth, it would just be sat on there for six, 12 months. Mm. And, and I don't believe when you're selling a, you know, a property, you should leave it on for that length of time. No. Folk tend to think, oh, what's the matter with that? So I agree with Mrs. B. Yeah, not now. They, they, they'll come a time when they come back up again. I mean, we said before when we were looking for our boat, I know it was during the pandemic and it was a whole different life time away that. Yeah. But um, that was and that was a nightmare. I got I was getting so upset because you'd look at a boat, whether it's a wide beam or a, or a narrow boat, and within twenty thirty minutes it was gone. Gone. They were literally going like that, and and I thought we were never going to find a boat, and we did eventually. Yeah. But uh, but now it's sort of it's levelled off, and and at this time of year we're in November now. Um, yeah. You know, it seems a, a funny old time. People don't buy houses in, no. in November or very rarely. Just to give you some context, David and Paula, we looked at a boat on brokerage when we were looking at we looked at three boats we won't obviously name them obviously we're in chow bella but there were another two boats that we looked at um one i really loved i really loved it i loved the bathroom as you know my views i you know if you can have a bath have a full-size freestanding bath um i i just love that you know what i'm talking about that boat is 160 165 pound all day long just sold less than 120 now the owners of that boat we don't know them we, we, we know them to say hello good morning have a quick chat to um, you know they obviously you know had the uh, funds to let it go for a really really low price but every day of the week that was 160,000 pound beautiful boat. the lady that owned beautiful. it had got immaculate taste beautiful. and it was gorgeous yeah, yeah. beautiful it was boutique yeah. wasn't it and you know there's another boat I've mentioned it's on brokerage right now you can look on you and use it's it's a Collingwood, it's 70 foot. Um, yes, it's got the two bedrooms. Um, it started off at around about 200,000 pound. It's got a sale agreed on it. I think it's 154. So crazy, Mad. absolutely Mad. crazy times. Yeah. Um, so same yeah. with houses, same with houses, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's, the market's just, you know, yeah. it, it's softened as they say. Mm. But yeah, um, so what's going on? 
don't know. I, I think it was a bit of euphoria. You yeah, know, I do. After the pandemic, yeah, it changed a lot of people's opinion. Yeah. I mean, we we bought in the pandemic. I mean, anybody that knows us or have seen Mr. B said to me, "Shall we sell the house and buy a boat?" And I said, "Are oh, you having a laugh?" Well, I didn't say you're having a laugh. I, I used a choice language, but um, and I thought it was being ridiculous. But a lot of people's opinion changed because of the pandemic, and it was this this real hype, weren't it? And then yeah. I think it's come down a little bit since. The, the one thing, as I said to the earlier question or suggested to the earlier question, was you know if you are hell bent on getting a boat, you'll go and get a boat, mm. and and there's a really now is a really good time yeah. to buy a relative a new or relative new boat. You know my views if it's brand new and if it's in the water. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. The steel is already there. It, you're looking at it. So it's not got to be rolled or come off. The, it's there. Bid the hell out of them. You know, when we inquired a few months ago, putting one of these together, brand new, three years minimum, and the thick end of £300,000. Now, that is, one, too long to wait. And I don't think spending three hundred thousand pound on a boat is something we'd ever do. I drop, we'd rather put our money into bricks and mortar. Mm. So that's that end of the scale. But if you're looking now and they're in the water, happy days. As I say, brokerages would hate me. We, we had we had a couple that that came to thank you, didn't they? Yes. Um, yeah, we did, and, and that's a good point. Genuinely speaking, was it two weeks? Or yeah, about two weeks, two weeks ago? ago. Literally come and knocked on the gate here, and there's a boat here on brokerage. Again, won't name it, but he said to me, thank you ever so much for what you suggested on one of your Q&As. We got 35% off the boat. That's all I'm saying. Because he didn't feel afraid to, no. to ask. As long as you do it in ask. a nice yeah. and professional way and you can put some rationale behind your, your bid, off you go. Yeah. Um, and I'm delighted for that couple. Yeah, delighted. nice Delighted. Yeah. They bought a lovely boat as yeah. well. Yeah, they have. Right, so... Um, ba 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 uh, Sarah and Peter Lewis, sorry, I was just scrolling through the questions. Sarah and Peter Lewis from Stranraer in Scotland. Oh, lovely. Very strange question. Oh, lovely. And by the way, Sarah and Peter don't talk about liking the channel or <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> I'm joking. But a strange um, question, that's good. Very, very strange question, but we both absolutely love to know. Um, the waterproof coat you both wear, sorry, I'm only laughing because I can remember um, the email coming in and check your emails, by the way. Um, the waterproof coats you both wear on the vlogs, are they any good? We know what mate you both wear and we know they aren't cheap, exclamation mark. Do you do they keep you dry when it's really peeing down? Uh, very same question with your walking boots. Um, these things um, really aren't cheap, are they? But we'd absolutely love to know, are they worth it? Peter keeps saying to me, come on, let's just invest and then we've got them. But we'd love to know your opinion. Brilliant, they're brilliant. Um, the, the the walking boots are they Timberland? No. What um, what were they? They're not Timberlands. They're, they're proper. I'm not yeah. saying Timberland art. They, I can't remember. But they're proper mountaineering boots. Yeah. So so mine, my, my boots, and they they like that leathery type of stuff. They're not they're the not leather Gore Tex. Gore yeah. Um, and I've had them now for about three or four years, and I I wade through the wettest uh, environment in them, and they're brilliant. Um, and our jackets are. Kagools, I think we'd call them. They're brilliant. In fact, I was out yesterday, which was Thursday, in Sheffield, and it was torrential rain. And the only bit that got wet on me was my legs, because I didn't. I just had my jeans on, but my body and everything was was perfectly dry, and my hair was dry. Yeah, we made the decision. I think it was a couple of years ago. We went to um, go outdoors. Yeah. And um, other outdoor shops are available. Um, and we just, I just stood there and said, you know what, I'm fed up of wearing, you know, particularly the kind of the the jackets that, yeah, they kept us dry for a wee while, but after that, so yeah, you know, as you say on my email, because you did ask what brands they were, so we've bought them and they're amazing. And At the, the end of last year's, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, my yeah. boots that I'm on, I think I'm yeah. on my third or fourth year with my boots. No, not quite. I think it's about two years. Oh, is it? Yeah. Get I lose not track. That long. Yeah. You know when people say, oh, how many years ago did you yeah. do that? And I go five and they go, no, it was ten. Yeah. So I have no idea. But no, in essence, 100% mm. recommend them. 100% um, so yes. um, invest especially in this country let's yeah. face it not cheap but but I say we're out every single day if you're only out one day a week just 
go mm. buy a 50, 60 quid gagool or yeah, whatever. Yeah, because me and Kenneth, um, when, when Mr B's working, I get up about seven o'clock and uh, me and Kenneth go and have a walk on the towpath and stuff. And sometimes we come in and, we're, and it's absolutely threw it down with rain. Yeah. But I know that the, all the mm. top half of me is going to be dry. I was out in mine yesterday walking mm. back um, and it was biblical. The bottom half of me was soaked. Maybe we need to get waterproof trousers. I'd get them in a heartbeat, but Mrs B thinks it's a fashion show and she won't. I feel a bit like Mitchell Moving Man, on. look a bit. <laughs> so yeah, David, go and get yourself one. Definitely. Sorry, uh, David and Paula, I, yeah. I do apologise.